In today's video, I want to show you how to use the solver feature of Microsoft Excel. Uh, it's an excellent way to get to the bottom line, uh, actually uh, called bottom up accounting, and you'll see why. Uh, now, first of all, you have to make sure that the solver is installed properly uh, before you can use it. So what you do is uh, in Excel 2010, you'll pick on the file menu. Then you come over here and you pick on options. Under options, you pick on add-ins. Now, other add-ins, you go over here and pick on the word go. And then these are the add-ins that are available. Perhaps in other videos, I'll show you some of the other add-ins. Um, but uh, in this case, we're going to pick on Solver Add-in and then click on OK. Now, what should happen when you do that is when you pick on the data menu, then over here on the right-hand side, you'll see the word Solver. That's the one that you just added in. Now, you only have to do that one time uh, for each computer that you're working on. Once it's there, it'll be there forever. Uh, now, um, at this point, here, here's the, the thing that we're trying to solve. Here's just an example. Let's say you're coming out with a new product and you, are, you want to send your flyer out to your current customers. So column A is the state that you're mailing to. Column B is the number of clients in that state. Column C is the cost per flyer in that state. Column D is the cost per mailing in that state. Column E is the number of mailings that you're going to do to that state. Column F is the total cost for that state, which I think is column D times column E gives you column F. F7 is going to be the grand total for the entire project. And column G is the percent of total for each uh, state. So let's say you're in charge of this project and your budget is $47,000. You can't exceed that. You can spend less than that, but you can't exceed $47,000. Let's say you're really trying to concentrate on Minnesota and Minnesota is supposed to get at least 50% of the budget and each state has to have uh, at least three mailings. So those are the parameters that you have to deal with. Um, so the, the object here is you can change the number of mailings yourself and uh, you can try to you know change those numbers until you get to uh, something that meets all three of those parameters by using them as much as, of the budget as possible or you can put all of this information into the solver and have it come up with a solution for you so let's go ahead and start the solver we're going to pick on the data menu and we're going to come way over here and pick on solver now this screen looks a little bit different in uh, Excel 2007, but the concepts are basically the same. Uh, now, first of all, where is this set objective? That has to be a cell that is um, a formula. So in our case, we'll pick on F7. All right, so the objective has to be a cell that contains a formula that's very important. We're gonna make F7 equal to the max as much as, you know, that'll be, um, uh, as close to the $47,000 as possible without going over. That's what max means. Soon we'll see that when we pick on min, that um, it will we'll have a different result. Now, if you needed F7 to be a specific value, then you would pick on value of and then type in the specific value here. But we're going to let, let it go to the max based on the parameters. Then uh, it says by changing variable cells, those are the values that will change. In this case, the number of mailings are going to change. So I'm going to highlight E2 through E6. The number of mailings are going to change in our model. Everything else will stay the same. Now here it says subject to the constraints, and this is where you put these kind of parameters. So I'm going to come over here and pick on add. And then you're going to get this other window. Um, so for the cell reference, I'm going to pick on F7. Has to be in this case, you could say less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Uh, let's try less than or equal to. And for the constraint, I'm going to click on the cell that has the 47,000, which happens to be G9. So it says F7 must be less than or equal to G9. So in other words, when it comes up with a solution, this has to be true. And you can have as many constraints as you need. Uh, I'm going to pick on add here. And now we'll be on another new constraint. The next thing that we said was that Minnesota's percent of total has to be at least 50%. So the cell reference for Minnesota's percent of total is a G2. This has to be greater than or equal to. And here we'll pick on the 50%, uh, which happens to be G10. So in this case, it says G2 
must be greater than or equal to G10. I'll pick on add again. Then the next constraint that we said was all of the mailings have to be at least three. For the cell reference, I'll highlight from E2 to E6. We're going to click on this pull down and I'll say greater than or equal to. And for the constraint, I'll click on the number uh, three over here, which happens to be cell G11. So it says E2 through E6 must be greater than or equal to G11. That's another constraint. Uh, here's another constraint that I forgot to mention. I'm going to pick on add. The number of mailings all have to be integers. So I'm going to highlight E2 through E6. And in this case, we'll pick on INT, which means it has to be an integer. It has to be a, um, a whole number. All right, so E2 through E6 has to be an integer. So you really can have as many constraints as you need. Uh, I've seen people use 10, 15, maybe even more constraints when they did this uh, in a real example. Now, uh, all of the constraints have to be true when it comes up with a solution. So you load those up. Uh, let's click on OK. And now we're back to the screen where you can review what you have. So E2 through E6 must be an int, uh, uh, um, must be um, the cells that are going to change. The set objective is F7. It has to be a cell that has a formula. I want to set it to the max. Like I said, E2 through E6 are the cells that are going to change. And subject to the following constraints. E2 through E6 must be an integer. E2 through E6 must be greater than or equal to G11. That's where you have the number 3. F7 must be less than or equal to G9. That's where we have the 47,000. And G2 must be greater than or equal to G10, which is where we have the 50%. Now, all of those steps will be exactly the same in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, or in 2013. Now, in 2010 and 2013, we have to do one more step. We're going to come over here and pick on Options. Now, if you know anything about statistics, you can change these values and you'll get a different result. It really does work. But here's one that you have to apply if you have an integer constraint. You want to make sure that this is unchecked. Make sure this is unchecked where it says ignore integer constraints. You don't really want to ignore those. Of course, that's why you put those in. So make sure that's unchecked right there. Uh, otherwise, you can change these values, of course, to get different results. Go ahead and click on OK. And now we're back to this screen. Notice before I pick on the word solve that currently F7 says uh, 29,345. You can see that. I'm going to pick on solve. And I, it might have come up with a, a thousand different combinations and it said it found a solution. So let's see uh, if the solution is any good. All of the mailings are at least three. They're all integer values. Minnesota got at least 50% of the budget and F7 is less than $47,000. So the solver took all those parameters and came up with a great result for us. So I'm going to click on OK. So the solver uh, might take some time to set up, but if you set it up properly, you can save a lot of time, as we can see. Now, let me show you what that min means. I'm going to click on solver again, and I'll pick on min. And I'll keep everything else the same. Min means what's the bare bones minimum we can get away with, but still keeping all the constraints. So uh, I'm going to pick on solve again, and it says it found the solution for us. Let's see if the solution is any good. All of the mailings are at least three. They're all integers. Minnesota got at least 50% of the budget, and F7 is certainly less than 47,000. Uh, so that's the bare bones minimum we can get in with, but still keeping all the constraints. I'm going to click on OK there. And that's how we can use uh, the solver feature in Microsoft Excel. First you have to install it with the add-ins under the options over here. Okay, make sure that's checked right there. And then you have the solver and if you watch this video a couple times uh, hopefully you can figure out how to use uh, the solver screen here. And hopefully you found the video to be very helpful.